Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Greg and I am the course director for the BSc Honours Creative Audio Programme. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today, creative audio. What's it about? It's about the creative applications of audio. What does that mean? Well, it can mean lots of things because as you all know, audio is found in lots and lots of different places. So I'm going to spend the next 25 to 30 minutes talking about what we do, how we approach it, and the kinds of things that we think about and hopefully will be of interest to you. So why study Creative Audio at Ulster? What are the kinds of things you'll learn? How will you be taught? How will we support you? Um, some feedback from our students and then a conversation around careers. That's really what we're going to get through today. What sets our course apart? I would suggest there are three main areas and I'm going to look at these from right to left as you're looking at it. So the industry relevant part is really, really important. Before joining Ulster, I spent 15 years working in industry and I'm not unique in that case. The majority of the staff that you work with all have industry careers and indeed still work in industry. So everything we do is informed by that awareness and that knowledge. and we're, it's not just that we're preparing you for what was, but we're also trying to think you about where the industry is going, the trends, um, how things are shifting. So we're thinking about that while also grounding you in, this is how we produce music, this is how we do sound design, etc., etc. Then our facilities are clearly important. This is an area of endeavor where actually the right equipment makes a difference. So we've invested heavily in our studios, in our labs. The labs are all supported by the latest and greatest in terms of software that are used right across this whole area of endeavor. And we include a combination of not only digital software tools, but also analog tools. So some of that might sound a little older, but it's actually right the way the industry is going and um, they all have well they all have nuanced offerings they all make a slight difference in particular ways and it's good to know both so actually you can see a picture of a console here this is our main console in studio one and um, which you'll get to spend lots of time on then the last piece of this puzzle is the personalized teaching support I'm going to mention this later on, but I might as well mention it now. Our class sizes are deliberately small so that we can provide you with that uh, much more closer um, support that you need around your projects, um, around what it is that we're learning to give you that much more tailored uh, tuition in what it is that you want to do. We get many students with all kinds of different interests and sometimes you, you c it's very difficult to let's say for example describe a particular process that would apply to for example rock music or pop music or traditional music because often there there well, okay there will be there will be principles that will hold true across them but then they're also quite different as well and it's not only in terms of our teaching it's in terms of our just our pastoral care and our level of care to you um i'm a big fan of talking as much as we can so we'll put aside time for just informal chat just outside of class to talk about what you're interested in what you wh where where you want to go wh what your goals are all that kind of stuff and you know then just generally talk about music audio technology or the things that we're interested in so in terms of what we're going to well the, well let me let me just back up rather than at this point let's let's just think about what are the kinds of things that we learn on this program and i'm going to frame this as essentially three questions creative audio and everyone everyone here we ask all the time pretty much these three questions how do we produce outstanding and original audio material now that can be music that can be sound design that can be um, a bunch of foley which might not necessarily be tonal so it could be door creaking hammers banging whatever it is how do you get th the most out of that and how do you produce it to be the best that it can possibly be 
so there's a lot of stuff within that you know, going from music out to the uh, less let's say tonal tonal material and um, there's a good deal of uh, different approaches to that so that's definitely a big question for us and we'll start at the very beginning and lead you right through to an advanced level next question then is well how do we guess and it's it's related to above but discrete is discreetly different as well how do we get the best from the tools and the instruments that we use so we are quite focused as i've already mentioned we are quite focused on tools we have excellent studios we have a large range of equipment that's available just to use on an ad hoc basis and i'll talk about that in in just a moment um but learning how to use these tools as best as possible and then moving into the software domain how do you actually manipulate the software to do things that are really unique that are really different that essentially can help you to create a sound that is your own for example or to create an experience that is your own um so on the latter one when i'm talking about experience this is where audio is often combined with other media forms so it might be picture for example and it might involve other software so um there's really a, a range of of options there and there's quite a lot of tools that we ha we have to become familiar with and how do we maximize that as best as possible and then the last piece is well where is this creative work going to be received and essentially that comes down to well what are you producing this for is this is this a piece of music is it an ep or an album where are you going to put that are you going to put that on bandcamp are you going to put it on your own website are you going to go with cd maybe you're going to go with vinyl maybe you're going to go that retro route um there are all differences to how we produce that and we need to bear that in mind um, then maybe you're not going to do any of those things and you're going to go straight to this is going to go maybe to a club environment or a music venue environment and um, what do we need to know about that um, and then there's also the option of going into public spaces so um, the material could end up in a gallery or a museum for example lots of opportunities around that and then film scores the soundtracks and the sound design for games games are in and I'm going to talk about that in a little minute because we do we do invest a, a, a good deal of effort in that because we see it as a an important area going forward. With game engines, the the software that sits um, at the root of a game experience and provides all the functionality that you have. I mean, it's essentially a high performance computer, um, and within that there is really extensive as audio processing, audio mixing, audio manipulation tools um, that are, well, as I said, they're extensive and really quite exciting. And then of course, you may be de developing something that's just going straight to online or for a mobile device. So there's lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of projects like that. And I'm sure you're aware of many of them. Um, just think of, I mean, our world today arrives via a screen of some sort and usually on a mobile device, not always, but usually. And many of these apps and experiences, um, they, they include are, are really a quite rich audio experience. So thinking about that. So here are the module well here are the the four years of the program it is a four-year program by default well no it's a three-year program by default but you have an optional placement year sandwiched between year two and the final year and i'll get into that in a second so uh, by default it's three years but you have this option to make it a four-year program so in year one we have uh, modules in music creation that's essentially how do we construct music now, I'll point, uh, I should mention this at this point. Many of the students who join us have some awareness of music theory beforehand. And that's great because working in the area of music, it's helpful to be able to at least have a, uh, um, a let's say, a, an intermediate level of understanding of how music is actually constructed. Because a lot of the work that we do is tonal in nature. That is, it's constructed from musical scales, right? Excuse me. 
Um, but if you don't have that, don't worry. This is what these music creation modules are for. They essentially are music theory for sound designers. If I could explain it that way, you don't have to go and learn an instrument and learn, for example, music grades. We will get you to a point where you can understand how music is essentially put together um, with through these modules. We also have two audio production modules in first year, so we'll start you right at the very beginning. We start with Ableton Live. I'm sure some of you know what that is. So we'll work with that in first semester in first year, and we'll work you through that, getting up to an advanced level. If you know some of this already, great. You'll be able to move through that relatively swiftly. But we, we also move swiftly, and we'll get to, we try to get to an advanced level pretty quick. And then in the second part of that, we look at things like post-production, sound design and things like sampling okay which is uh, a lot of fun we also have a module in live sound and production so well it 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 does exactly what it says on the tin in this case live sound i'm sure you all know what that is so looking at music performance um, what do you do with the vocalist what do you do with the drums what do you do with the keyboards the the what do you do with the guitars um, there's this thing called feedback I keep coming across. How do I deal with that? And then how do you actually organize an event? And that's actually, we introduced this in first year because we work closely with the music subject. Uh, that's the BMUS degree, which is in the, housed in the same school. And we actually run events throughout the year. I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's great to have uh, students from Creative Audio and the, and the BMUS program coming together to put on performances. And it's, it's just a great experience. We have a module in designing sound. So sound design is a big thing for us uh, because it's it's really quite important to the future of audio. And, and that's that's just the reality. So designing sound is how we design sounds from scratch using various bits of software, microphones and processing tools. How do we how do we create sound that achieves a particular thing? So it's it's less of the experimentation and, oh, Eureka, I found something that's interesting and more, I need to produce something that does this. So how do I go and do that? Um, really, really interesting module. And then it is a university, de yeah, it is a university degree, so we need to take a look at some of the historical elements. So sound technology and culture achieves that, and it's really looking at great artists and great genres and great ideas within this area over well through throughout history but relatively recent history and um, moving into second year then second year is a lot of fun and i'll tell you why sound recording and production and creative computing those two modules they're actually double modules so audio production is split up into audio production one and audio production two. Live sound and production is one module. Designing sound is one module. Sound technology and culture is one module. But sound recording and production, that's actually a double module. So it's, it's essentially two modules dedicated to just that topic. So for that module, we get really deep, deep, deep into recording music into the land of, into the world of studios and all of that uh, production and in into advanced production so you'll have to produce a track again working with the music students and uh, you'll also then have to uh, produce a, a lot of experiments so for example on a particular day go into the studio and do nothing but strings it could be violins it could be acoustic guitars some stringed instrument another day do drums another day do vocals but really 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 understand what's going on and experiment with it so we get really detailed on that one because it is an important area creative computing then is where we're using software to essentially manipulate audio and do interesting things with audio but coupled within that we also do things like circuit bending we take instruments apart we hack them we break them sometimes and then we we just create crazy noises and interesting sounds and then it's all manipulated by electronics and software so that is also a double module and that reflects essentially the amount of time needed to actually get interesting results so you don't need to have an electronics background or an engineering background to get involved in this really 
most of the time it's a screwdriver and a soldering iron and then you're 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 using software beside it to essentially manipulate what you're doing um so another really 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 interesting module sound design for games guess what it's sound design for games and for this one we team up with the game design program on the belfast campus they produce the games and we produce all of the sound design for it so that's the music the uh, sound effects and they can be synthesized but they can also be real or more like foley f-o-l-e-y if you've come across that term before so essentially we go out with a lot of microphones and some advanced recording equipment and we will record cars we'll record birds we'll record footsteps on stone footsteps on sand footsteps in the woods the woods themselves um, we've even had a case where uh, we've had one final project and uh, now where um uh, one of our students went and recorded guns for a uh, for a first person shooter game some of you will know what that is so um yeah uh, went and recorded pistols and rifles and shotguns so that was a big interesting project lots of lots of microphones it was like 12 microphones each time recording these various weapons and then producing that and then essentially putting that into a game so it's another big module for us lots of fun um, and then you'll be working with game designers and animators and just getting that in that that experience that is that is quite like industry Acoustics and cognition. Acoustics is how sound behaves in space, in our day space, and then cognition is how we perceive it. How these two, how these two, um, how these two, uh, what do we call them? Organs, um, on the side of our, uh, on on the side of our heads, how they work and how all of this, how we perceive things. So that's acoustics and cognition, a really important area in terms of understanding how sound behaves and how we perceive it. And then there's a module on electronic and electroacoustic composition and that's um that's a that's more well that's one that's more invested in experimentation so you'll do things like play around with multiple speakers so often we're just listening to two speakers or maybe headphones but what about if you double that out to four speakers or double that again go out to eight speakers or double that again go out to 16 speakers and arrange them all around you and then you can start to put individual musical elements into each one or move them around. Um, but it's also thinking then about the timbre and just just in the pursuit of interesting and perhaps n not exactly traditional uh, sound elements to be uh, integrated into a, c a composition. Okay, so avant-garde, experimental, interesting. Into final year then, you have two options. You can either go and study abroad, so go to Europe, go to the United States, and study in a related area. There are lots of uh, related areas in, in all of those locations, and we have existing partnerships in place. And then you get to experience a different culture, a different place, and it's, it's important for growth. And then we have the industrial placement option. So this year we have a number of students going out in placement. So one's going to a venue and one is going um, one is going to uh, essentially on tour with a, with, a, with a large production company and producing audio and video. This particular student is also interested in video, so it turns out he, um, they, can, they can work across both areas. So lots of options there. Essentially, we're just trying to create an opportunity for you to spend a minimum of 25 weeks out in some related area where essentially you can find that personal confidence uh, which again is an important part for growth now all of that is optional you don't have to do it but we would recommend that people at least think about it um, because it is a valuable uh, experience into final year then we have uh, lots of options uh, final year is really where there are l lots and lots of options so you'll see there sound for pictures so you can look at sound for a moving image that's sound for film that's that's the focus of that one but it can apply to other things we will have already done some post-production work back in first year so that essentially answers the part of how do you construct audio elements around um a moving image essentially the focus in that particular case would be a short advert how do we uh, essentially create the sound elements to, to to tell that story 
game audio implementation uh, it's a tricky one to say game audio implementation that's using game engines in a much more serious way we'll have introduced sound design for games already and for this one then we get really into details of how you can essentially synthesize things from scratch within the game engine so for example make a car sound with nothing more than a tone and then a lot of processing and your joy and your controller to essentially uh, manipulate that interactive music systems we take another look at ableton live and something called max for live and a bunch of other tools we'll also look at uh, for example um, audio out in the environment so maybe doing things like um, projecting video onto the side of a building and then having an audio element with that and then how do we actually how do we how do we pull that off and how do we make it really interesting lots and lots of things in there music technology project is a small project that happens in the first semester and that's essentially up to you or, or, or do you have an idea is there something you would like to pursue you pitch the idea to us and we'll offer some thoughts and from there you get to proceed and you do that and this is indicative of a lot of uh, this well this is indicative of how we work in the main we really do try and help you to essentially develop the work that you are interested in and then lastly and i know i've been spending some time on this but it's i think it's important for you to understand the last thing then is the final project and this takes up the entirety of second semester which is from january out to the end of may in in, in any given year and that is essentially your big project so that again is well that's essentially a triple module you have uh, two modules that are essentially focus on the practice and then the other module is essentially on the written work to support that so it's essentially what 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 was the thinking that helped you go in this particular direction and helped you decide what it is that you wanted to do or what you did and then just a reflection on that uh, it's it's not nearly as um uh, well it, it's all related so it's essentially a, a great big project so how will you be taught well I've, I've, I've discussed much of this either two or three modules in a week uh, in first year it's all three modules in, in a week and then when you get into second year it's two because some of those modules are double modules if you remember um, and sometimes these sessions are divided between theoretical and practical sometimes we have to break these out so sometimes we will all meet together and we will talk about the theoretical component first and then we'll break out into smaller groups and that's when we'll do the practical this is a very hands-on area it's it's very difficult it's in, nigh impossible in fact to really understand this at a deep level without actually doing it and that's part of our philosophy you can see over on the right hand side uh, well it says creative but what I mean there is creative audio creative audio is practice focused and that's that's really what we're about it's about um, taking the theory that's okay but then actually applying it and um, yeah actually applying it to to a context that makes sense for you um, so class time is between 12 and 16 hours which is which is good um, because you get as I said lots of time with us and we have lots of time to invest in talking about what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it and how we go about it um, and it is a full-time course and we have a part-time option as well uh, but for the full-time course it's about 35 hours per week and then lastly active learning which again goes back to this practice focused part of the program um, th our, our philosophy is really rooted in this idea of active learning so we're actively engaged it's not that you sit in a room and then I try to inspire you with a, a bunch of stuff that I've read and I understand um, but then you have to try and absorb that in some way that we find that that isn't particularly effective so what we'll do is we'll break it down all into little chunks and then we'll go at it individually and we'll experiment and we'll try things out and then we'll report back so that's all about just being actively engaged in the process um, uh, this is important with us your training in the use of the studios begins in year one and uh, this is really really important so you'll be into the studios from year one we'll start we, ha we have four studio facilities so um, we'll be starting in two and three 
and uh, eventually moving into one. Uh, well, we're starting two, three, and four, and then we'll eventually be moving into into one as we proceed. And this is all in addition to, which is my second point, all in addition to the equipment that you can borrow. We have lots of hardware, portable recorders, lots of microphones, lots of headphones, lots of equipment that can be used to manipulate and process audio out and about or ad hoc. So, for example, you could go out. Um, you could pick a well we actually we have lots of practice rooms as well so you, you could bring a bunch of recording equipment into the practice rooms and record something and then just return it to us so even though we say there are four dedicated studio facilities we actually have a lot more uh, when you get down to it and we like this I use the term ad hoc which essentially means that we can set up wherever we need it and that's that's actually quite that's that's, that's quite functional and indicative of how things actually work um, so what else do I want to say here? Yes, no exams. This is the big one. Exams for us are just not an effective way to, to, to gauge exactly how you've done in anything or what your level of understanding is. So all our assessments are based around coursework. Projects essentially that you design, they're your ideas, you pitch them, you, you, you design them, you tailor them, you filter them, you focus them to, to reach a particular end and we help you and support you in that and that's what we mark you on so it will always almost always you'll be working in something that you're interested in I'm not going to go and tell you produce a piece of music at this tempo in this key and in this style that's not really going to happen you always have the flexibility to put your own mark on it whatever it is that we're doing so I think I've touched on a lot of this. How are we going to support you? As I've mentioned, the one-to-one -one mentoring is really important. I really, really find it important to speak to everybody. And uh, from year one, we'll set aside time where we get to talk about what you're interested in, what your hopes are, where you're interested in going, and any questions that you have. As I've already mentioned, active learning is a big part of it. All your projects will have dedicated supervisors, um, we have an open door policy, so not just for me, but also for, for all of the staff. You can, uh, we're all very approachable um, at any time. We have extensive on and offline resources. So um, we have lots of tools, for example, that can be accessed uh, from home. So uh, you'll be able to work on materials from there if needed. Uh, we have a really good library that's stocked with lots and lots of interesting materials. And as I've already mentioned, we are industry focused. The class sizes are deliberately small and the university itself provides outstanding student support. We are number one in Northern Ireland for student support. And uh, particularly over the last two years, this has really been shown. And um, we are excellent in this. Uh, we're, we're excellent in this area. So what I haven't mentioned is where are we? Well, we're based on the McGee campus, which is Northern Ireland's, well, we refer to it as Northern Ireland's second city um, after Belfast. Um, Derry or London Derry, it has a really vibrant cultural sector. There's lots of venues. Music is a very big area of endeavor here. And there's lots of festivals, lots of events going on all of the time. And as you can see down the bottom, it's one of the most affordable and it was well, it's officially one of the most affordable places to live in, in the UK, but it's also one of the friendliest. And you'll know by my accent, it's not a Northern Ireland accent. I am here many years now and I really am amazed every day at just how friendly everybody is. So we are on the McGee campus, as I've mentioned, and that's just a, a really, it's a, a city that's alive with music and activity on, on the art side. We have four studios. There's two dedicated computer labs. We're based on, based around Apple Mac very much. All the studios are running Mac and the labs are running Mac. Please don't assume from that that you have to go and buy a Mac. When that time comes, you know, let's have a conversation. But right now we provide you with all the tools you need. Um, and then we have lots of performance spaces. There's four, yeah, um, and possibly a new one on the way. And then, as I've mentioned before, we have an extensive selection of equipment available for field work. Essentially, you can just put in for a loan and you can take the equipment and do whatever it is you need to do, which is really quite something. And when I say it's an extensive selection equipment, I do mean it's an extensive selection equipment. We have some really, really good stuff. 
So I'm not going to read this to you. This is some feedback from our students. You can just take a moment to read that. So in this case, I think the takeaway is that we, well, you know, we've been all been, we've all been doing this for so long. It would be quite a shame if we weren't able to essentially describe and explain these topics well. So clearly, we're doing something right here and another. And the interesting part here, I think, is just the, the the point around the breadth of the material that we cover, because we do, we are trying to prepare you for the future of audio, and there are many pathways in that. This is a short one, but I think it's important to remember that this won't, well, depending on where you're coming from, um, What's, what's really different about university is that you're moving into an environment where essentially you're in a class of between 24 and 25 like-minded and creative people. So it's a very different environment. And in many cases, you will meet with collaborators and friends who will be that way for uh, many, many years to come. And with this one, the bit I'd just like to highlight just quickly is the, the, the piece around independent thought and problem solving. Because these are what we refer to as transferable skills. Yes, they're important to audio, but they're important for lots and lots of other things throughout your life and your career. And it's good to see that. So in terms of your student experience then, we have a student society and uh, I mentioned, I, well, I briefly mentioned this earlier on. This year we ran, well, we ran one and there will be one more um, before the year ends, uh, gig. And we ran these in a local venue. So it was uh, seven artists and the whole thing from beginning to end was scheduled, produced and run by uh, Creative Audio students, which is really phenomenal to see. Um, and we're going to do lots and lots more of that. We also have a more traditional music society. Well, there's a music society, and then I, I'm, I'm using confusing terms here. There's an Irish traditional music society, music society, and a music society. And you're free to join all of these things. The traditional music on this uh, campus is 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 vibrant. Um, we also have the choir, which many creative audio students join. And even if they don't join the choir, they go out with the choir and they record the choir. We've just done that one recently. So um, the choir did a number of events uh, around Northern Ireland and creative audio students went with them and recorded each one. Again, um, it's a large choir, about 60 people in it and in really interesting spaces, just acoustically. Again, back to our acoustics and cognition module. Uh, it was really interesting acoustically, so we went in there with a, a bunch of portable equipment and lots of microphones, and we did some interesting work there. There's also a jazz band, when you can guess what that does. And then there's a number of festivals. Uh, one is called Oscillations and Modulations, and which I is actually um, run by some of the staff uh, on the Creative Audio program. And then I'm sure some of you will have heard of the Caltronic Festival, which is the largest electronic music festival on the island of Ireland and we work with the Caltronic people on an ongoing basis. <coughs> so I mentioned transferable skills earlier on, the independent thought and the problem solving and when we speak to employers these are the these are the skills that they're really interested in. Um, yes being able to use particular tools and be able to produce particular things are important but actually being able to be creative come up with ideas plan those ideas deliver those ideas collaborate with others and then communicate that all the time and communicate well 
this is in fact what employers are really looking for and this is embedded from the very beginning of the program how we work is essentially rooted in industry practice that is we try to echo we try to parallel we try to essentially parrot what happens in industry so that this isn't going to be like school or further education we try to recreate an industrial ish environment and we try to work along those lines so future careers then where are the possible destinations for someone interested in this area well sound design as i've already mentioned is a really big area because it just covers so much and you know, I've, I've spoken really quite at length already about games, so I'm not going to do any more on that. Film is a big area. Northern Ireland is just buzzing with film activity, and we also have the Cinematic Arts Programme in the same school, and we're working very closely with them so creative audio students can produce music and do all the audio for, for example, a film. They could do that as a project and TV and documentary similar and the production isn't all that different between them and then something I'm broadly going to refer to as audio storytelling and I'm including things like podcasting in that because really podcasting okay it started very much as well kind of what you're listening to me here now some somebody speaking into a microphone um, or maybe two people speaking into a microphone but increasingly we're finding the production values of a lot of this uh, this format let's say um, are increasingly advanced so you're moving into the domain of much much more detailed sound design work and um, involving music voiceover sound design effects and, and lots of um lots of production work around that and this is one of these unique aspects to audio which i haven't really touched on but if you want to for anybody creating material um I, the, the term they the term that's thrown around today is content which I'm, I'm not crazy about but personally but let's say if you're in the business of producing content for a particular audience when you choose the audio only route there's something about audio that makes it much more intimate it gets to people much more deeply because not having the, 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 the visual domain can be a bit of a distraction sometimes so audio goes much more deeply more quickly um, so that's why I'm calling it audio storytelling, telling a story with audio. And that will also include things like post-production, so things like advertising and marketing. It's, and these are all very busy areas and um, there is actually some very interesting work being done. Then what I'm calling interactive audio applications. So essentially everywhere audio is used in an interactive context. So that could be software is the obvious one. But it could also be a reference to things like museums and galleries, essentially where you're doing audio tours and, and that kind of thing. Uh, lots there. A sound recording and production, of course, producing music for wherever you're, wherever it needs to go. Um, we have many students who are performers, and I guess I should include live sound in there as well. Um, so I'm kind of coupling those two together. Then technical roles. Uh, a variety of those it could be on the software side it could be on the hardware side it could be on the audio engineering side um, multiple pathways there event management we have a number of students doing that trying to think about the future of uh, no, not trying but actually thinking about the future of music performance and trying to surface new music uh, and, and do that in a way that makes sense in the world today and then, of course, you can move on um, to more research. You can do more advanced degrees or maybe even go on to a PhD um, if you are so interested. So a quick note here that our courses are subject to change. Um, I, d I don't foresee anything radical. I don't foresee any radical changes to this program between now and um, the next time we chat. Um, if you want to get in touch, of course, there's the university website. There's the Creative Audio website, which we will be uh, upgrading and updating over the next couple of months. By the time you see this, it, uh, you, you'll likely see it. And then if you want to get in touch directly, just email study at ulster.ac.uk. You can apply now via UCAS. And that's us. I hope you found that helpful i hope you found it informative i hope i didn't rabbit on too much on some of the topics 
and um, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for your attention. Have a great day.